Hello and welcome. I'm Bill Wake. We're here working today on Dungeons and Patterns. It's a role-playing game about design patterns, originally live action, and we're changing it to be implemented in Elm. And uh, what we're up to now is we've got the basic structures of the, the, the puzzles and the game and all that kind of working, but we have a few outlier puzzles that don't really fit the model of describe a situation, try a few actions, and guess the result. They, they're more interactive. And in particular, a couple of them uh, would like to use a drag and drop kind of thing and then, and then analyze the final way they've, they've arranged things. And I basically have no idea how to do that in Elm, so we're, we're doing the lines of a spike. All right, let's see where we are. Well, where we are, we left things red, okay. Um, and this is, uh, well, I'm often in a bit of ignorance on doing things, but this one's a little even more than average, I guess. Okay. Um, what we've done is we've added a couple actions to the model and they're representing dragging start and end. And then over here, let's see if I can get this right. We've, we've tagged certain elements as draggable. And the big thing that makes them draggable is making cursor colon move. And we made them user select none so you can't accidentally select the text instead of just dragging it. Okay, where's this being used? Well, okay, the idea was we're gonna edit a couple commands, drag start and drag end. Um, and we update, updated our message to work with them. So something is wrong there. Let me, let me comment this out a moment. Okay, so with this, What's your problem? Oh, well, you don't handle the two cases. Let's comment them out here too. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna peel back a little bit and let's, uh, are we still running? We are. Okay, let's save this. Oops, the, save this. Are we still in view? Okay, I'm gonna I'm peeling out everything that's drag and drop at this point. Two or four. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this division. Let's hide all this. Okay. And we're passing. Okay. Um, this is a little awkward. I'm trusting something will end up here. But one thing I'm unhappy with, independent of this, is this final guess pattern. You know, all these, they're like, okay, just update one or two things. No biggie. This one, it's complicated. So what I'd like to do is extract a method for this. And let's see. So this room, if solved. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to call it guess the pattern. And the result of this thing, it's going to have to be, I don't know what it needs, but let's make a method. Guess the pattern. Right now it takes, I don't know what, it must need a model, right? Yeah, we got a model, a message and a model. Message and a model goes to model and a command. Okay. Is that the right way to do this? Well, 
This should take the message in the model. Message to model goes to model command message. Oh, well, we want this. <laughs> Message to model goes to model command message. Now, I don't get the problem here. I got stuck on this name, guess the pattern. It's confusing me. Well, <laughs> your confusion is my confusion. Okay, I'm going to move this up. I don't think that's the issue, but let's just eliminate that possibility. Okay, well, let's return model command dot none and see if we can at least get the parser con correct again. Interesting. What is this case complaining about? It's not a function, but it was given one argument. Okay, I'm going to take it even, well, guest answer, is that a string? It's a pattern name. Oh, where's game over? Okay. Um... I just don't get it. What is, maybe there's a couple messages. Okay, I got confused on this name. It's confusing me a lot. Watching for changes, Elm pattern. That's my function definition. Which sure looks a lot like the other. Okay, let's take this out. Does that fix the case statement above? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, what failed? Yes, pattern. Yeah, because he doesn't do his job. Okay. Um, guess answer. Let's, oh, we don't pass that down. That's, that's probably the issue. Okay. Uh, let's uncomment this. Okay, yeah, so guess answer gets a reference down here, but uh, we didn't, we didn't pass it along. Okay, so let's try to guess the pattern message, model, and guest answer. All right, now we need to make this take a string, message, model, guest answer. Okay, this should be better. message isn't used well I can see leaving that out we we know this is uh, only called once we know what the message is so no reason to pass it along we've already done the case statement to decode it so we know that we know the message. All right, this should be better. Yes. Okay. Um, I feel bad leaving a little junk in there uh, for the drag spike, but I just, um, that long method was just too crazy 
I just it it made me nervous. <laughs> It, we had weird syntax errors before, so I think there may be something about the depth of the thing was throwing it off a little bit too. But in any case, um, let's make sure our to-do is right. It's almost certainly wrong since we didn't do what we said we would. Okay, so we refactor, extract case for guess the pattern. All right. That seems like what we did. That should be there. Okay. Now, I don't know that that gets us any better for this, but the thing is, let's go to our, our documentation. So I was kind of following this example. Okay, so they put cursor move like we did, and then you you attach to listen for things. Now this is HTML5. I'm okay if it's kind of restricted to modern browsers, um, but this has nothing to do with Elm. I mean, we have to we have to provide our own Elm management of this stuff. Okay, so what this does is a series of changes. So he makes handle drag start, change the opacity and drag end, change it back. So it gets opaque, uh, uh, you know, lighter. And then uh, when I release, it turns the color back and puts the, the object back. Okay. Um, no, I can't drop it down there. Okay. Um, now, maybe we should start there. I tried to do the actual dragging before, but um, didn't get it. Okay, so query selector all has to be in the container in the box. That's to make sure we're grabbing the the right components here. Um, do they have, yeah. So here's the container, here's the box. The boxes are the things we're dragging. All right, let's see what we're doing. We'll go back to view, we'll uncomment this. Okay, so I'm, I'm marking the container. This is the container. Hmm. Is that right? Oh, this is the container. It's got, oh, we, we added it to this. Okay, so we got a game over, that's fine. Then we have this division that's a, well, let's, let's mark it too. Class container. I don't know if the container says draggable true. Oh, no, that's not a container. Okay. <laughs> and round and round he goes. Okay, this is the first item. Draggable true. We attached on drag start. Well, we tried to. Um, and gave it a command message I don't know if this is right message produces attribute of message um, I think I think message in our case is really capital message okay we're trying to get this command okay so let's let's try that um, Let's use message and message. Okay, and same thing here. Okay, um, now somewhere else I pulled up this drag start as decode succeed. Um, It's sort of a, a yeah, it looks like it's just a constant to put in an output stream. Okay, so it returns OK and the message. All right. Um, so we have these these methods on drag start. Now drag start, I undefined it. So let's let's pull these back. Now, 
how does view like that Ooh, different complaint type mismatch required message well, on click we get a command game of record of log by the log Well, we're supposed to be passing something with this. I think I can make it complain about that. Oops. Let me try just passing the string in. Okay, so I'm I'm sort of assuming. I'm trying to make this first item draggable and passing in the, the A so I know it's text A, okay? Um, and let's see, let's, let's run it. Okay, I think, I feel like I erased more draggable stuff. If it builds, case does not handle all possibilities okay that's message okay yeah we took this out okay I thought we had something more okay indent these all right drag start string let's make sure drag start actually supports string okay you can see why I say I have these syntax errors. I just don't quite understand why I can have it there, but not there. I'm parsing a case, but this error confuses me. Okay, let's swap the order. Drag start. Okay, still confuses it there. But drag end to me, drag end and drag start look the same. I mean, they're doing nothing. Not exhaustive. Add missing branches. Okay, let's try that. Oh, my spacing was off. Wow. Okay. All right, so here we are. We have, hopefully we've attached the listener and this string, let's see our model. I think I can put a message in it, right? We had a message somewhere. Where was that? I know when we handle an error, a load error, we, oh yeah, we do this. Okay, let's, we're just trying to see if we get some stuff coming end to end on this thing. So drag start. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the description be string. Okay, and so I'm putting right. So this this is basically an error or kind of a default setup. It's a way for us to get the error messages out in the case that a file doesn't load, our JSON file doesn't load. 
Um, but so what I expect, what I would like is when I start dragging that I get this message coming back um, in an unknown room. So it should act a little weird, but but hopefully print an A. <laughs> All right, um, let's make sure dungeon JSON. Okay, final room is 1A. That's good. Save this. Okay. All right, reload. Okay, so I've got more text A. I attached a drag handler here, and I think something should happen. I thought it should, I thought it should do a drag start and do switch me to the other room. <laughs> that's not what happened. Okay, that's junk. Um, let's. I'm going to try debug.log. We've done that somewhere else. Hmm. Okay. Let's go back and learn about debug. That's and that's in core. Debug. Log string and value. Re logs it and returns it. Okay, let's try that. Log, the string is going to be string. And then the value will make it be this. Okay, and this stuff's junk. Okay, so now what I'm hoping is I get a debug log that's a, a letter A coming from here. Um, let's say dragging a and dropping a okay so my hope is I hope I get a log message somewhere I don't even know where they show up but we'll hope for it okay hopefully on the terminal or maybe here I don't know we'll see where it comes all right so back here reload the page start dragging and drop okay did we get an, a, a message somewhere well i don't know where it would be no compiler terminal string is never used okay yeah that's all right Really? That doesn't sound like me. Okay. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> okay. Something went wrong. Well, that's interesting. Um, do I have a console somewhere? seem to be helping me. Let's try it this way. No, it doesn't seem like it either. I'm afraid of that one. Ugh. Okay, how do I show the console? Hmm. 
Hmm. Event log was not it. None of these sound like the console. Okay, so I don't know. Hmm. I'm trying to, if there's something I can put in the message or the view. Well, let's let's add this to these others. I guess we need this. It's a text. Okay, the div. I'm kind of trying to make the div be the draggable thing. I don't know if that's a good choice or not. Okay, so I'm trying to get the three elements. Okay, let's go back to his example. Let's see. All right, so we've added What I think we've done is the equivalent of adding the listener on each item in our list. Okay, so I think that's kind of like this. We've got these three. Now the the handle drag, that's our message um, our message handler, the big case statement. Okay, in message. Um, now I'm returning the same thing. All right, I think I've got my syntax woes straightened out. So let me put this like this. Start before end. Okay, let's save and we'll try one more time. Um, okay, now I should be able to drag anybody. And somewhere there's A, B, and C being written out, I hope, <laughs> but not where we can see it. Ah, I mean, you would think a console would be kind of a basic thing here. Uh, that's more managing them I think I mean suggestions welcome tool windows project Ooh, what about debug yeah I just don't know if we're really running through the mechanism because it's really it's really the reactor you would think well look here enough yeah it'd be nice if it came out there um hmm that's our test so there's nothing there okay they are all draggable I don't know what what this is. Okay, let's try. Let's try this thing again. Okay, so this says 
make the room description match our message in this error room and then plug in the error room as the current room. And I don't know, do we need to make the current room? Let's set current room to room just to make sure that thing is. Okay, if we go to default game, it is based on room. Okay, so that sort of says we're building a new new structure and hopefully drag start I think should have done this let's let's put it on drag end as well just in case our message okay okay I did a reload Drag start and nothing. Did not move me into an error room. Hmm. Okay, I'm willing to give this a little more time, but not a lot more time. All right, so what I think I've done, I believe, let's go back to the top of the stuff. Okay, I believe all my movable items have cursor move on them. Okay, that's on the box, which corresponds to individual items. Um, and I did that. Okay, that's in the CSS. Let's get our type in our view. Okay, so I've made them draggable. Maybe I need to make their class box. I haven't done that. And what was our CSS? Oh, draggable is, is the same as box. Okay, so if you mark it draggable, it's cursor move. That's probably Let's use their name. I think I feel like draggable is maybe an HTML5 attribute. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna put this in on each one to make sure our stuff is in a consistent. Consistent with the rest. Okay. Marked it as class box. Okay. Once you have draggable true to find on your content, where's that? Oh, oh, you gotta have both. Okay. Maybe that's part of it. <laughs> okay. Um, kind of overloading that word might have thrown things off. Nothing made it a class. Okay, so that, and it should. Drag over, drag over, drag leave. I uh, don't think I care quite as much about that. All right, so doing this makes it opaque or lighter. Okay, go back here. We'll save this. Try again. not seem to do it but how can I all right I have not <laughs> I've never used the real elm debugger maybe this is the moment I got to do that okay the other one we can try is see if this person's library works better for us Now they used to have a fancy reversible drive backwards kind of debugger. Debug to do. 
to do is don't let you get feedback. Delete that log. I don't think that's helpful. Go to your shell, cd to your directory, type helm reactor. Okay, we did that. We can see the project. Oh, okay. The wrench. All right. Or type question mark debug at the end of any reactor URL to enter debug mode for that file. Oh, okay. Did I do that right? End of any reactor URL. Debug mode. I don't see anything that looks debuggy. All right, let's go. These don't look like little wrenches to me. I've missed a step somewhere. Go source. <laughs> I mean, I can try the other link. It was main. Nothing there looks like a debugger. Okay, so what's confusing me? Um, let's let's track this thing end to end again. <laughs> Go back to the beginning. Okay, so we've defined a message drag start and a message drag end, and when you call drag start, it tries to throw you into the error room. Okay. The fact that we're not in the air room makes me feel like we never called drag start. Okay, so how do you call drag start? Well, that's in the code. Down, down, there we go. Okay, we've defined a vertical container. We've put in a button and we put in a number of divs. This class vertical container, it's a bunch of rows. Okay. We've marked each one draggable. We've given each one the class box, so it's cursor movable and user selectable now. We gave it a method that says, if you detect a drag start, call the drag start message or command with this argument. Okay, so let's see on drag start. Given a message, it returns on drag start and a decode succeed message, which we hope is an attribute message. Okay, this one's the weak link to me so far. Okay, on drag start, well, 
that's trying to register the handler. Drag star, is that, did I do lowercase? No, I did not. My nemesis in JavaScript, oh my gosh, how many times I've done that wrong. And I don't even use JavaScript on any kind of basis. Probably partly why I make the mistakes a lot. Okay. Drag. Ha! Okay. We are in the unknown room, dragging A. Dropping A. That was really dropped. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's visible progress. Okay. Now, what I don't understand is like, how do we get the order of things once we've dragged them around and dropped them and how do we let them swap and all that? I think that's the next phase on this. He did his demo with the uh, opacity, um, and but doesn't release there. Okay, but later steps are gonna do that. So, uh, normally we take a break about now, so I'm at a good point because we <laughs> fixed a stupid mistake. Uh, let's take a break and um, uh, two or three minutes, we'll come back and see if we can keep working on this spike. All right, see you in a couple minutes. Hi, welcome back. All right, uh, so we wanna go to the next phase of this thing. And the example here he's got, okay, he's he's got this opacity thing. Nothing happens when you drag over. Let's go to the next one. Now, when you drag over, the target gets these dotted lines. I don't think I care about that. Hmm, that looks glitchy. Hmm. Um, I think when he ends it, he takes everything and removes the over over is the dotted line attribute. I don't really need the visual. You're dragging a link, you need to prevent default behavior to navigate. Okay, that's not gonna apply to us. Drug enter toggles over. Okay, so I think we'll skip this stage. <laughs> Maybe a mistake. To process the drop, add an event listener for the drop event. In the drop handler, you need to prevent the behavior for drops. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, this drop event. Okay. Yeah, this is um Hmm. I'm not sure how this interacts with Elm. Okay, um, that's the behavior we want. No, I don't want file upload. Okay, I don't know. 
I'm not quite sure how to how to make this stuff happen. I mean, our our Elm code we don't normally control quite quite that level. I don't think we don't really get the JavaScript or browser event to work on. Now I don't know if there's a way to do that. Handle drop. Okay, let's go back to handle drag start. Okay, handle drag start is given an event. Okay, let's see. Let's see the other ways of doing this. Okay, this one they tried to use a class draggable. That's probably more where I started. We need to handle mouse down, mouse move, mouse up. Now, I think the drag stuff is supposed to be doing that for us now. Let's see what this one says. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> it's meant to be easy to use. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Define a model. Include the element's position. The internal drag state. Drag. Initialize the drag state and the element's position. When drag by updates the position, Drag by compute the new position. Is it TXDY? Subscription. Sample of multiple targets. Okay. See this, the fact that this is mouse trigger and touch trigger I, I don't know it makes me think it's doing the uh, it's not really using the new draggable stuff I don't know I don't know. I'm finding this discouraging. Okay. I want an easy way out. I don't see it. Alrighty. Um, let's... Can we get access to those events? Because maybe we can do some interpretation off those. Okay, well, the browser module. Maybe that's... Now, let's make sure this really is Elm. Okay, well, this is kind of a good question. How can I listen? For global mouse events. Okay, yes. Browser.events. Okay, well, maybe this is promising. 
Okay, let's look for browse. Decoder message. Looking for things that tell me hmm. attachment of the elements do not tell you which element you are currently above. Oh goodness. Well, can I get a clunky? Can I do it in a clunky way if I can't do my drag and drop? Ugh. I want the viewport. Seen viewport. I don't see anything that sounds like seven. <laughs> Put jesting aside. They don't want jesting aside. Element offset x64. I mean, maybe if I can get the x offset. Well, I guess if that gives me the XY position, 64 because it's indented, 25, 60 because it's down here, looks like it's relative to the whole thing, width and height. So I can, I can ask where my items are, that seems like progress. Oh, okay, there's the element that comes back, x, y. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, so as long as I have an ID on these things, then they should be okay. All right, let's 
see if there are other solutions out there. Playing drag and drop game. Attribute draggable true. Oh. Well, maybe we haven't done that correctly. Okay, on drag helper, let's find that. On with options, oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, well we can get this stuff, okay. Drag start message, right? So we want to see what he does with on drag start. Okay. Imagine this is in some sort of repo we can just look at. Okay, so on drop gets called when you drop it somewhere else. <sighs> okay. On drag end when you just let go of it without dropping it. Let's find the word drag. Hmm. Tutorial finished sounds like a good place to look. <laughs> All right, let's look in here for drag. That's better. Okay. So we got drag start, drag over, drag end, and on drop. Okay, those all kind of make sense. Um, I don't think we care about drag over in our case, but that's okay. All right, so drop on new poll. Okay, where's... I hate to <laughs> get to sit here and watch me read. Um, 
Okay, so on drag start, we do move disk. On drag end, we do cancel move. These are defined in our messages. On drag. Okay, let's just find the other. Oh, there's on drop. How are you a pole? Well, if it's droppable, then we add an attribute. On drag over, return false. Must be the oh, is that an HTML attribute or what is that? Well, it's a drag event. It's just so weird. If is droppable. Okay, so this is this is purple. If if there's a moving disk and the pole is empty or has a larger disk on top. Okay. Model moving disk and maybe map is droppable. And with default false. Okay, so find I don't know where disk list comes from, but it's coming in. Okay. So if basically if you can land on this pole, then here's some styles and attributes. Style is some colors. The attributes are on um, on drag over is a return false. It I just have trouble relating this to on drag over up here. Oh, because they're different. This is the mixed case one, and this is the lowercase one. That may be the one they said something about supporting Firefox. Um, okay, well, I do on drag start. Yeah, so they're they're attaching these attributes with little snippets of JavaScript, I guess. Hmm. All right. Um. I'm feeling like we're at the end of our spike, and I'm not happy. I, I don't think I've figured out how to do this enough. I mean, it looks like it can be done. And it also looks like it's more work than I want to do. Um, I'm detecting the dragging. I'm detecting the dropping. But I'm not detecting the drop on. Okay. Um, Here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I I feel like we're going to come back to this, but um, we spent an hour plus today and probably it was at least half an hour, if not an hour on uh, Friday. And that's that's as much time as I want to give that spike kind of one one day's, you know, one session stuff. OK, on the other hand, you know, so I'm looking for I want to move out of spike mode and do something. I don't think I know enough to do the, the mouse move stuff yet. I think I can come up with a, a less fun alternative. 
but enough to move forward. And I often end up taking that. So what I want to do is pull out the drag code and um, store it in our to do as just sort of a future uh, future work. I don't know this this is drag and drop drag and drop okay and I just want to take the snippets we've got um, let's start with the CSS okay um, I guess we can leave those in there's no real harm but no we're gonna take them out okay uh, so CSS, we've caught that. Then the message um, is these two. those two and then um, this is update that stuff and then finally view okay so button game over this stuff Show end of game, yes. Okay. And these helpers. And this maybe deserves a bigger write up somewhere, like a a separate message or something. I don't know. All right, let's save. Let's make sure everything's running. Okay. Um, let's push, even though I'm pretty sure that's not much of a change. Um, what is our to do? And I'm just going to say restore after spike. Oops. Actually, let me capture this. We did do that. Hmm. Maybe I should be putting this at the very bottom. was okay so <laughs> there are still problems all right I don't think we've we've gotten to the end of the the grief we're gonna have putting in this new stuff um, all right, uh, so let's start with model. Okay, right now, model is this record. 
basic I think of it as a record I don't know what they call it but I've got this this record with a bunch of fields and uh, represent the current state in the the main game what I want to do is I want to have um, there are rooms for which the we're in the mini game mode and so um, the mini game has different states than the model but I want to keep the model state around so I'm going to make a recursive type I hope and 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 make that work so this is really main game I I, I don't quite know how it gets set up um, but this is the main game and then I think I'm going to have something that's like or um, well I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what I think it is I think it's like this we're going to tag it as a record type and then um, it might be a main game or it might be the um, arrows game that's a mini game okay and these two things, okay, so this means I don't know what I'm doing syntax-wise. Now this one is the one that I worry about. <laughs> what do I worry about? Unresolved reference, okay. So I'm doing something wrong here, but what I'm trying to do is change model from a kind of record type or sometimes they call it a product type because it's a room the number of possibilities is the room times the number possibly visited times the actions and so on and instead more like an enum that's um, a, a choice this or this or this so it's kind of a plus or a sum type and I'm gonna go back to I guess Elm documentation. <laughs> Let's. Okay, and I just have to find how to define types correctly. Beginner guide. All right, now here I've got type message equals. Oh, maybe I can't use type alias. So I got increment or decrement, right? Which is okay. Um, types, type aliases, custom types. How do we define our own? Railer or visitor? I want to attach information on it. Not like that. That's what I want. Yeah, I think I just don't need the word alias there. Okay, so let's let's make this this is a kind of refactoring um, all right yeah this is better I don't get the um, I don't get the complaint okay so now yeah this is a, a variant main game okay um, who's complaining okay model I think I have to say main game here nope okay regular string int regular is a function from string int to user okay to the main type so maybe I use the constructor regular instead of user Okay, let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, so according to that theory, I should be able to say main game here instead of instead of that. Okay, <laughs> not quite type mismatch required. Do I need to wrap this? Do I need to be explicit about all that? That would be boring. Hmm. All right, what's
what's your problem here? Model. Oh, how do I get to those things? Um, <laughs> okay, if I did that. Well, this is kind of what I was saying about addition types or sum types and product types. Um, Well, I think what I'm afraid of here, like, I don't know how you get from the, the on this type to its sort of type argument. So maybe, maybe I need to make, let's, let's be more explicit on subtype. So type alias, um, main game, can I do this? See, I think I can. I think these two things have different namespaces. So I'm saying I've got this type alias main game and I've got this type, which I'm going to tag main game, and they're they're different. Okay, and so I think this might be main game. I gotta take these braces off. Is that gonna work? Uh, okay, let's not confuse ourselves. Let's make this my game. All right, so I think what I've done there is I've said the main game has a my game for its info, and now I've created one. That's okay. Now this model does not have current room. Okay, um, we're going to take a break. Two or three minutes, then we'll come back and figure out how do we get the main game from the model. And with that, hopefully we can substitute this thing out and bubble the change through as sort of preparing for deeper refactoring. So two or three minutes. Okay, welcome back. Um, well, okay, so I think we've got our declaration okay now. We can build a main game, um, which is a model if we use the my game information. Okay. But now the problem is there's no direct access to this. Um, the model does not have a current room. The model has a main game, which has a my game that has a current room. And I'm pretty sure maybe pattern matching is the thing we want. So, okay, we got user equals regular string and int or a visitor string. And we want to write a function on user, well now we gotta handle the two cases separately. If regular name and age, okay. Now if we try invalid arguments, we get a complaint immediately. Okay, well that's, yeah, true but boring, okay. Um, I don't know if I'm peeling this off in a good direction or not, but model, okay, I guess I'll find a solution and then see what we got. We can say case model of 
and then um, we're going to take our main and then give it the argument. So um, main game of my game goes to Okay, um, this is, now my question is, I would like to, I wonder if I can say model main game here, apparently not. See what the complaint is. I can't find a main game type. Okay. See, my concern is I'm looking forward to the next step. If I if I say it equals main game or it equals um, arrow game. Okay, that's all great. But now every case statement has to have handling for arrow game and I don't know if that really applies we're not doing arrow game yet so I'm just gonna hide that for the moment okay but let's see if anybody else is complaining oh yeah everybody hates it view oh I hate all kinds of stuff too <laughs> oh. I don't know this looks like you know 20 minutes of changes all right let's let's push it through and see what happens okay so this this stuff is going to show up on all these to take a model Okay, and this becomes my game. We'll probably name rename these at some point, but um, We do indent those, okay. This is confusing. Let's do this one. <laughs>
Oh, well, that's something worked out nicer. Okay. Um. Well, we don't need the case then if, if that's the only situation. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Okay. Now this one. Okay. So dot game is really on model. Yeah. Or my game now. Okay, so I guess we're gonna have to do that. Case. And we'll be explicit now where we didn't before. Model of. My game. Dot game. Okay, dot game, dot game is a function from my game to game. I don't know if I have to switch it to this. Um, <laughs> there's still a ways to go. Yeah, I missed. Oh. I don't know if the problem is I'm I'm passing the whole model when I just want a my game. Now I don't want to bubble this all around if I don't need to. Let's, oh gosh, I just don't know. I want to get rid of the case. And if I, if I do it like this, my game goes to Boolean, then I make somebody put the case outside, which I think is progress. So if I do that, let's see, let's go take this one function in view and see what, um, what the consequence is. Model is end of game, show end of game, model. Is end of game, show end of game, model. Okay, so model.ends end of game Okay, let's read the model type expansion. He wants a model. Let's 
complaint. Found require a model to bool, but found a my game to bool. which means all of these need to be the same way. Okay, let's let's try this. <laughs> Notice I'm not checking anything in in the intermediate steps cuz I just don't know. All right. So, model, we're going to say my game. Drop these two lines. Um, so this is much less damage to them, I think. Pass exits model. Okay, let's take this to my game. Same thing on current room. The reason I think I can do this is because all these functions are around displaying the main game. And um, yeah, so I think I don't know, we may we may get in trouble. But that's okay. <laughs> we'll get there. Um all right, well we got rid of everything that seemed to care. Okay, so I'm hoping Well, I'm hoping view can have fewer problems because of this. Can move down. Is that a model function? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here. I wanna get the, all of these at the same level. I think this is my game. Do I want this now? Okay.
So the implication is if anybody's going to call these methods, they have to be peeled apart and do a, um, they already have to know it's a my game. Okay, now this one I think is right. We'll see. Okay, so I'll take this out. Now there's good piles of errors. All right, these, so now my show conditionally, it, it really is prepared for a my game. Which we need to import. Import model explosion model in my game. Where's that? Type alias my game. So conditionally is ready to go on my game with my game. Ooh, no, let's leave this model. Condition function of condition function takes a full of um, my game. Model um, I think that's saying this has to be my game as well. And this is my game. That should fix these. Uh my game goes to boolean. Okay, I give it my game. My game found. Required a my game. Found a model. I don't know. Huh. So I think I have to do it here, case my um, model, how did that work? Case model of, of, <laughs> stop. Um, my game, my game goes to this. Model, case model of, right? Oh, this is not my game. It is main game. Okay, why?
unresolved reference, so that seems like that. Back here, case model of, and then the interesting type. Case model of my game, main game. My game, and then this should be my game here. Breaking all kinds of things. Okay. Why can't I expose this? Okay, let's try. I'm puzzled. Okay, because this one, to name user. We say case user and then regular and the types. So case model of the types. Um, let's see if this. Here's model. Okay, maybe it's not. Message. Go back to test right now. We'll have to get there. I really expected this to be a much simpler change. Um, I'm looking for view. Wait, model? You were trying to expose name game. But that that's almost like a different message. Model test. We should see some red lines again. Test message. Buggers. Okay. Um, 
just too many. All right, let's kill this. Let's do clear. Let's try it again. Okay, model test, model test. I feel like it's not even giving us view issues yet, which is all I care about at the moment. I don't know, I'm gonna have to change a bunch of test stuff. Yeah, it's just too confused. Oh, do I dare tackle this? Maybe default model should be um, a my game as well. And this should be model. main game default model okay one complaint my game okay so that that helps all this okay good I don't have to change a million things somebody's gonna get <laughs> you know Somebody has to get from init to default model, and there's going to be some stuff wrong there. Um, I don't know what's up here. Huh. All sections is model. Model of my game. Okay. Um, acting... We got five minutes left. <laughs> I'm not going to get 42 changes done correctly in five minutes, I'm afraid. Okay, so show conditionally takes my game, my game, that. So my game should be a my game at this point. So let's let's try this. A my game here. Scene needs a my game. First, did it correct all these? Mostly. This one is not. My game goes to HTML message. Well, those seem okay. Let's just change the name. My game. Okay. So the first line is okay. Now all these other methods that take models, we're going to change into my game. Rename this to my game. Okay, that seems okay. Guessing, I'm gonna take a my game. I'm just trying to get the top level ones first. Well, we're cutting down the errors substantially. Maybe I'm just too pessimistic.
Now, I may be changing all this back next week. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, but that's quite a bit better. I gotta figure out this thing. I mean, I think this is my game, my game. Or else it's main game, my game. So I think it should be, can I import that? No. Okay, what's wrong? Okay, this one again, my game. Well, make options and judge pattern answer. Okay. Well, okay, I mean, that's substantially better. Message we haven't looked at yet. Model test, I thought we fixed. Waiting for changes. I wish that was big and bold. It looks like message is the thing it's upset about now. So something's funny, we'll stop here. Um, I guess we're leaving ourselves failing tests or failing compiler messages so we know we got to do something. Uh, we'll see. Okay. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the syntax about why I can't create a, my, a main game here, um, but we'll find out. So next time is Friday, which is December something, my goodness, uh, 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern time. Hope you can join me. I'll catch you again later or some other time. Thank you. Bye-bye.